Thank you, Anne, for being my liturgist today. I appreciate everybody who uh, helps to put worship together each week. Today, we're going to consider this scripture in light of joy, in light of dance. C.S. Lewis is a well-known author and theologian. You may know him best for his classic, The Chronicles of Narnia, which contained The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. But he's also known for his theological writings, like Reflections on the Psalms, The Business of Heaven, and Mere Christianity. Soon I will be getting off my shelf the book called Preparing for Easter, 50 Devotional Readings that are a collection of the writings of C.S. Lewis. It's rich and thought-provoking. Lewis once wrote some thoughts on worship in response to some liturgical innovators in England who thought every worship service needed to be a kind of variety show with each week being different from the week before. Worship, Lewis wrote, should be a bit like dancing. Once you have learned how to dance and have become good at it, you are able to immerse yourself in the dance and just do it, almost without thinking about it. But if you must constantly look down at your feet, if you have to think about each movement before you actually make it, then you can't dance yet, but are just learning how to dance. His words offer the dance and the learning of the dance, both as being important. Lewis thought a believer should be able to move through the liturgy without having to check his every movement. An ideal service would be one that you hardly notice the individual aspects because you are simply being immersed and caught up in a set of actions and a series of thoughts that are fully part of you already. Overall, Lewis makes a good point. I wonder if he knew how nicely his thoughts would fit with John Wesley's methodical way of worship, which has become our Methodist way. But we must also be careful. Worship may be like a dance that you are so good at that you can just do it freely and flowingly, but it must not be simply by rote, but with purpose, knowing and honoring God as the focus of our worship. We must never forget who our dance partner is, or the role that we play in the dance, and who is leading the dance. This morning I ask you, can you follow in this dance of worship through your faith? Are you willing to participate? Can you surrender to the dance? Or must you lead? And while I'm embracing this dance metaphor, of course, my mind wanders off to the song, Jesus Take the Wheel. And that, too, talks of who is in charge. But now let's stick with the dance metaphor this morning. Let us today consider the dance of our lives, the dance of our faith, the dance found in all our relationships. In and through everything is God leading the dance. Are we dancing? Are we participating? Or have we put our dance on hold? Is there joy in our dancing? Or has the sobering facts and situations of the world around us caused our dance to stop? Today's gospel message about the authority of Jesus threw a disturbance into the dance of the religious leaders. This was not what they expected to experience with Jesus. No, this was different. Jesus did not fit into the dance as they knew it. He was not dancing as those who had gone before him. The words and actions of Jesus himself become the content of his teaching. The authority is not in particular speeches, but both in his words and in his life. Jesus lived as one of authority. One who had authority. An authority radically different from that of tradition. In the Jewish tradition, the authority came from finding and quoting scriptures to 
back up anything said for any given situation. Jesus spoke his own words. His words were present tense, not relying on the past words from God. This was different from any prophet that, had, that they had known. It was puzzling to the scribes that day, and maybe even puzzles us today. Jesus' words are thought-provoking, filled with wisdom and truths about God. His authority, in his authority, there is obedience. To understand this authority, we must not only listen, but consider our own thoughts of who Jesus is. And that, my friends, we do through our faith as we dance the dance of life. Some people have authority because of their rank or position. We know those we must respect and obey as having authority over us. The hierarchy of society and even religion was well known in Jesus' day. As a carpenter, Jesus had no positional authority in the community. His authority came from God and was revealed in his wisdom and knowledge and his ability to convey God's word to the people. As early as the age of 12, when his parents found him in the temple, teaching and speaking with the religious leaders, all were amazed as they listened to the wisdom that did not match Jesus' years. He wowed them with his grasp of scripture. The people could not know the source of his authority. All they knew is that they had never heard an individual teach the way Jesus did. They said to one another, he teaches as one who has authority, not as the teachers of the law. When Jesus spoke to the people, he would begin by saying, I say to you, these words claimed authority. This was different from the rabbis in the temple who began by saying, Moses has taught us, or the Exodus teaches us, or the prophet Isaiah reminds us. Jesus did quote from scripture, but he also said things that were new. I am the door. I am the vine. I am the gate. I am the good shepherd. I am the light of the world. His teachings were fresh and new. Something astonishing was happening. God was no longer in the past or distant. God was in the present, living among the people. Whether they knew it or not, whether they accepted it or not, God's Son in the person of Jesus was there with them. Imagine that you were there that day in the synagogue when this happened. The authority of God was being revealed before their eyes. Evil was silenced and removed, and they were there to see it. Oh, they had heard stories of God working in their history, like remembering Moses and the parting of the Red Sea, or watching the walls of Jericho fall. Those miracles were in the stories that they were taught from their youth. But this day, this day the power of God <coughs> happens right before their eyes. On this day, <coughs> Jesus demonstrated his authority of his teaching in a tangible way that the people could witness through his power over the spirits as he healed this man. Because of his authority, he was able to command silence and the spirits obeyed. Interesting for us is to realize the spirits who cried out knew who spoke to them, who stood before them. They also knew to ask what would happen to them because they had no power to resist against him. There is power in the name of Jesus. We have seen the transforming power in the lives of those touched by Jesus all around us. We have witnessed to the unexplainable experiences that let us know God is present. There are times in our lives when the only thing we can do is cry out the name of Jesus for help. I know I have no power or authority of my own, but the Bible tells me I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I might fail miserably on my own, but I will triumph with the help and the presence of God. 
Jesus is available to all persons, regardless of situation or position. It's offered to us as children of God who are made in the image of God. And when we cry out the name of Jesus, there is power and authority in the name. Each time we do so, the result is a lesson in the building of our faith. And when we surrender ourselves and allow Jesus to be Lord and Savior over our life, the relationship of love and grace is free to flow and free to flourish. Thus, we dance. A new dance that is joy-filled as we take each step with the one who is love and grace. So I ask you today, can you follow Jesus in a free-flowing, ever-changing, burdens-are-lifted kind of dance? Or are you still struggling to lead the dance? A dance you know you need God's help with to perfect. The joy of the dance just might be found in your surrendering to the one who knows the dance. A basic aspect to dancing is that it's important to stay in step with the one who leads. When Jesus takes the lead, he knows every step you will take with him. It's ironic that I use this dance metaphor with you today because I do not dance. When David danced before the Lord at the return of the Ark of the Covenant, I would have been one of the ones to call out to him and tell him that he, what he was doing was wrong. But even though I do not dance physically, I can tell you emphatically that when I allow myself the surrender to dance in life with Jesus, when our steps match and we are able to flow and move even in circles when I become dizzy, those are the times when I find my joy. Think of this dance through life as fulfilling the verse from Acts 17, which says, For in him we live and move and have our being. We must humble ourselves and accept the authority of Jesus and surrender our own will to the will and ways of Jesus in order to dance together. Only then can we live in him and let Jesus lead. Allowing Jesus to lead the dance is a beautiful thing. There's beauty in surrender. And we can surrender because of the love Jesus has shown toward us, each of us, as children of God. Who has the authority to lead the dance of our lives? Jesus. Why? Because he has been given it by God the Father for all eternity because of his obedience, steadfastness, and love for us. Philippians 2, 9 through 11 says it best. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, and in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. That's authority. Let's join the dance. Let's share in the joy of our salvation. Let us, without fear of our own performance, accept the freedom he offers to surrender to the dance. And let us bind ourselves together in the celebration and dance of the kingdom of God. Let us dance in his love, dance in his forgiveness, dance in his grace. And may God's grace overcome our resistance so we might accept his outstretched hand in love, welcoming us to the dance. Thanks be to God. Amen.